trying. Okay, it's going. Perfect. So, uh, well, welcome everyone. So today is third of March, twenty twenty, and let's start our weekly uh, wrap up meeting. Mm -hmm. So I've been reviewing the um, old agenda of the previous days. You know, February eighteen or the previous one. I think that was the time. Yeah, it was here. I couldn't attend. Oh no. Okay, I remember. So February eighteenth, we were discussing about um, having uh, so using uh, single issue tracker, so moving things only to Grimoire Lab and tickets and so on. Um, so that's one of the discussions we had like some weeks ago, and then we were talking about uh, certain dashboards. So there is still one ongoing from that is uh, that was done by by Gerf. So we were stuck on the how to import export things, and then we were discussing about uh, having new use cases. Uh, we we have three of them, and then as well. So we were discussing as well about. Uh, opening this discussion to the community through the uh, Twitter account and so on. Uh, that Georg, did I mention this to you? I don't remember. I think I did. Did you mention what again? Yeah. So the so the goal is to send a tweet and say, "Hey, we are looking for use cases to be covered by Grimoire Lab. So we would like to have what the I don't know metric or use case that matter to you. So then we open some kind of." I can always send a tweet, just send me what you want me to post. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, we can word out right now what we want to say and I'll post it immediately. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. So, well, so yeah, we, we can have this now. And um, then I guess we have another topic open, which is this discussion we are having in the main list open by Santi about um, moving everything under the GitLab umbrella. Um, yeah. So during these days, uh, sorry, during that meeting on the 18th of February, uh, we decided to go for an agenda proposal for the next three days, because our idea was to open discussion about the different use cases and, and decide to work on one of them. Um, last meeting didn't happen. It was canceled. So then this is where we are today for March 3rd, 2020. Um, so what I'm doing is to copy the agenda proposal from the previous day mm -hmm. to today's meeting. So I'm doing right here and then we can have, uh, we can add perhaps the other open items about uh, using only one uh, repository lab for all of the tickets. Um, we have this other discussion about uh, moving to, uh, to GitLab. Uh, Okay. Um, so do we want to start with the discussion about tickets in one place? I don't know if this has been already done, so I'm not aware of this. And the other, this, the second discussion would be the migration to GitLab. Uh, to GitLab. Okay. Okay. You're right. These are this, this is the same issue? Uh, or are these two different things? No, those are two different things. So uh, the first, the first line says using only one repository for all the tickets. Those then, are two different things, but are related. But because okay. the proposal to move to GitLab mm -hmm. came from that ticket. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the the problem with with so the first idea was to to give you more context. Was that uh, well, we want we want to have a single point of where everybody from the community can go and check all the issues that are related to Grimoire Lab. And people or users don't need to know specifically 
uh, what components are in Grid Lab or what uh, or where to open the issues. So the the idea is that they just go to a single repository and they find all the issues there and they open all the issues there and all the requests, whatever. So all the documentation, all the knowledge is there. Uh, so the idea was to use uh, this, this central repository, uh, Grimoire Lab, the one that we have now, and to uh, disable all the, all the issue trackers and all the other repositories. But the problem with this is we cannot analyze uh, our own data because there's no way to decide that to, to at least with our current tool, our current platform, there's no way to uh, to know if this issue belongs to this uh, component or to another. So that was the main reason why I suggested, hey, we can move to GitLab, where we can have all the all the subgroups, so everyone in chaos can have their own subgroup, subgroup, and we can manage the, all the projects on that way. Uh, so that's so the, the. So yeah. how does the how does the issue tracker in GitLab work work differently? At, no, it's kind of the thing? same. It's kind of the same, but the thing is, uh, you have a. Uh, so uh, GitLab is dividing the, the, the root, let's say the root place is, the, is a group. Mm -hmm. So we can have the chaos group. And from there, you can open new repositories or open new subgroups, okay? So and then mm -hmm. under those subgroups, you can open other repositories. So it's a, you have a hierarchy of, of, of repositories and subgroups. So if you, uh, access to the issue tracker of the of a, of one of the subgroups you can see all the issues related to all the other repositories or or of or all other subgroups under that group do you get it do you, do you? And, and that would work differently than just disabling issue tracking in github for all but one repository where you want to track issues how would that be different the, the problem is with that is that uh, there's no way to relate uh, an issue to a component because the components are in other repositories. So we need to find a way to do that. And there's no way to do that in GitLab. The, the, the best thing that we thought was to use labels, but you need to use uh, but you need to create those labels on your own and users cannot tag, cannot use labels to tag the issues. It, it must, uh, only maintainers can do that, which is a problem because it means that someone needs to go there and see what the problem is and so on. But if someone really knows what the problem is and which component is if related to that issue, it's easier to do that. And is, how is that related to the issue of people putting things in the wrong repository? Because if they put things in the wrong, if they put the issue in the wrong repository on GitHub, why wouldn't they associate it with the wrong component on GitLab? Well, the idea is that the, the main, the main, uh, the main point or the main place to to open the issues will be the subgroup, so the GitLab group, with the, sorry, the Grimoire Lab group. But if someone really knows that uh, this issue is related to other component, because I'm using that, you can move, you can open the, the issue there. And there's no problem. We don't need to move issues from one place to another because someone that goes to the to Grimoire Lab can find all these issues, even if they are in other repositories. With Git, with GitHub, you cannot do that. So if they, if, so, if so, yeah. So, 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 yeah, I really just, I'm just trying to understand, like I haven't used GitLab, I've used GitLab um, inside 
my company for distributing materials to students and it's it makes it really nice <coughs> if you want to distribute things uh, and still have a host repository for 40 students. Um, it does have some nice features for that that GitHub, GitLab, GitHub doesn't have. Um, but that was a private instance of GitLab, not the one they serve publicly. But from an issue tracking perspective, it sounds like the main issue is people putting issues under the wrong repository if they don't know which repository it is. And then being able to link it link that issue to a different repository. If I'm thinking about this right, the, the real issue is that you can't then quote unquote move that issue to the right repository. Like if the user knows the repository it goes in, that's satisfied by both architectures, right? Yeah, of course, um, yeah. It, 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 it's, if the, it's the case where the user doesn't know which of the repositories it goes in that you have an issue and because you can't apply a label in GitHub when you're submitting an issue. And is that, I didn't know, I mean, I guess I always have rights on things that I'm submitting issues to. So I maybe didn't recognize that limitation. Um, so the user can make a guess if they know where it is, but then you can change it later inside of GitLab. And I think what you're saying is in GitHub, the user can't make a guess. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot make a guess, but also if you, if you open an issue in a different repository, there's no way to look for that issue. You need to go to, the, to that repository and look for the issues there. So you need to, to know in advance that the issue is there. It's like to avoid duplicate issues or people that ha have the same problem as, as you have. So, so uh, that's that's my the main concern. If someone wants to find an issue, like I have this problem, something is failing with something in Grimoire Lab. So if they go to Grimoire Lab, probably they are not going to find the same problem that others reported before. They need to go to the repository with that issue was open. And so by having a subgroup in GitLab, you're able to see the collection of all issues? Exactly, you can have that. You can have that. And you can also, uh, well, link those issues to other issues that are, you know, in the same, well, in the same group or in other groups. So for example, if we, if we have a group that is chaos, you will be able to see all the issues open in chaos. Now, we don't, we cannot do that. So right now, um, there was somebody then who had posted a link to Cauldron. Might be helpful if we what is that? click on that. Yeah, well, this is, this is the, like the view that you can have, but here the problem is in, I think, uh, I think Caldron, there are three repositories or four. So if, if you click in Caldronio, Caldron. So if I click the I first link, yeah. Caldron, you, Caldron .io, that's a, is that a group? Yeah, that's a, that's a group. So and then the other that, ones are, and the other ones are repositories. So Caldron is a repository, <laughs> Caldron Worker is a repository. No, it doesn't work as a repository. It works uh, as a group. I see. So the, the root, the gitlab.com slash cauldron IO, it's, it's a group. And the other, it's like chaos right now. Yeah. But the other ones that are there are repositories. But in the, on the left side, on the left bar, yep. the vertical bar. So if you go there, there are issues. Yep. And you see that it says 74. Yep. So if you, if you click there, it's showing all the issues that are open in all the other, in all the repositories that are there. With it within this group. Exactly. Okay, so then you're saying <laughs> if you set this up as a subgroup, so chaos would be the group, Grimoire Lab would be the subgroup. Exactly. And then you would, it would visually look a lot like this. Yeah. Um, it would just say GitLab or yeah, GitLab slash chaos slash Grimoire Lab, where Grimoire so, Lab is a subgroup. And then the visual that you would see is basically exactly like the cauldron 
the Cauldron yeah. IO such that you could see an aggregate of all issues across all repos within okay. the Grimoire Lab subgroup. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And, and, and you so currently have... right now, you can't, in the Grimoire Lab space in GitHub, you can't see an aggregate of all issues. You have to go repository by repository. Okay. I also yeah, think that it's, just trying to understand. Yep. Yeah, I think that it's also possible to have other kind of like a wiki for a group instead of for a repository, but I'm not sure about that. So for example, okay. we, we will be able to have like all the documentation in the group and not in a repository. But so I, I'm not sure, but I'm not sure about that. So I know. So if I was to look at um if I look at the open issues here, Santi, mm -hmm. and I look at um, issue 262. 262, okay. Yep, just right at the top. Yeah. So is there, I think maybe to Sean's question, is there ability, is there an ability in GitLab for me to, um, right now, okay, so how do I, if I click on 262, how do I understand what repository this is part of? So I can do a demo really quick. Okay. You can transfer issues across repositories on GitHub. I thought I'd done this. Yeah, before. yeah, we, we know that. We, 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 we know that that's possible. So it's, it's not, it's, that's not a problem. It's, then that but, solves the, the, the feature need for GitLab, right? Because if it's in the wrong, like if a user knows the right repository, that's solved either way. Because they put it in the right place and there's no issue. If a yeah, user puts it in the wrong repository, you still, no matter which platform you're using, the user still assigned it to the wrong repository. Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, so transferring the issue is really the same thing as moving it in GitLab, isn't it? Yeah, but in, in GitLab, you don't need to move anything. Because it's all one issue tracker. No, you can have several issue trackers, but you have an uh, overview of all the issues open under the same group. I see. So, I see. It's the so display it, of yes. yeah. all of the issues that are open under a group yep. that is not that might visible. have like, Yeah, a group that might yeah. have 15 so, repositories. Right. So. And the trick is if you use one, like you can turn off, like a lot of actual, like when I've been doing analysis of corporations, a lot of corporations like turn off issue tracking on all but the main repository. And they just take all the issues in under the main repository. Um, but what you're missing there is a user who actually does know where it belongs, has no ability to signal to you, this is where I think it belongs because you don't have a tag an issue, a person creating an issue can't add a tag, right? Exactly. That, that's, that's not a problem in other tracking systems. For example, like Baxilla or something like that, when, where you can assign an issue to a component or to a product or whatever. So, but in yeah. GitHub, they don't have that kind of stuff. Or in Jira, they have also the same, and, but not here. So that's a feature that we miss. And the problem with that, it's, it's, it's a side problem. It's if we move everything to a single repository, we can, with Grimoire Lab, we cannot analyze our own data. Because yeah, we will have uh, issues opened in Grimoire Lab, but we won't know, or we won't show for people like, these issues, these issues are related to Perceval or to Arthur or to Mordred or whatever. So we won't. Right. Have that. We will. So somebody have would have. So someone would have to triage your issues to get them assigned to a place. That's yeah, the, and, and we also and we yeah. will also hmm. need to you, to have some kind of uh, uh, a specific analysis for our case because. Uh, how do you do that? How do with you know uh, our platform is a is a multi-purpose, so anyone can go and use it. But if we want to analyze our data 
and we are doing something that others don't, we need to create something special to analyze our data. So it's pointless. <laughs> Um, so Santi, if I was to look again, if, if I go back to like 262, issue 262. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, how I do think... I observe that what repository that's part of? Okay, let me check just a second. It's big. It's, it's on the. It's the. Well, if you are seeing the list of issues, you see yeah. under the title, it says Cauldron Dash 262. Mine just says 262. But Cauldron, it says Cauldron at the beginning. Mm, let me That's the repository. I'm, 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 I'm talking about the. I'm looking at the. Uh, not at the issue, I'm looking at the issues list. Yeah, so if I, oh, oh, okay. So if I look at the issues list, gotcha. Yeah. So if I look at the issues list, I see. So it, so. So the, you can actually label issues on GitHub by using a hashtag of the label name and you can include it in your templates. Yeah, but you need to create a template for all the components that you have. No, you just need to create a label for all the components you have. So, um, yeah. like, so uh, like, and but that'd be the same as having some way. I mean, it's just another. I guess I need to use GitLab to have a clear picture of what I'm missing. Um, Because I, yeah, I just need a, I need a, maybe I should sign into GitLab and put Augur over there and see how I can do things differently. Because yeah, the, I, the, the GitHub issue creation basically just like on a pull request, if you did hashtag issue number, the way it works for a non-member of an organization is if you do hashtag, you're going to get a list of all of the labels um, that you can that you can assign and they'll be suggested based on uh, a label list. Now, yeah, it'll be the label list, but it looks like the label list is filtered um, by what you type at first, but also possibly um, by what you type in the subject line. It'd be, I'd have to test it to know if it's perfect, but. So that that was one of the main reasons. The other main reason was that, you know, we like to to use open source and to contribute to that. And GitHub is not open source at all. GitLab, it is at least in in some parts of it. What is the what is the what? I guess there's a critical part that's not open source for this task. What, what do you mean? Sorry. Um, so we're talking about issue labeling and um, how to make, so you have this sort of two use cases, one where you have a developer who knows right where to put it and they're going to put it in the right repo on GitHub and they're going to give it the right issue tag or group in GitLab. It's the people who don't have any idea which component they're using that are causing trouble, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and, and so I was, you said something about open source and I didn't know how that was connected to. Oh, it's, it was more a philosophical point. Yeah. It's more philosophical. Yeah, uh, so, yes. Okay. Yeah. And is the, what is the, I guess, and I, I don't keep up on the, I guess, open source um, purity of different things. What, a, what are the, is there like a article or something that, sort of lays it all out so I have some sense because I, mean, I obviously like everyone I want to be 100% um, pure open source and ban windows from my classrooms if I can but um, just and, and I think we should all like have a moment of silence for anyone who has to maintain the windows operating system um, but but uh, what is the what's the open sourcey thing on github or on gitlab that github doesn't have and I 
that may be an extremely naive question, but well, I don't know. Uh, GitHub, uh, everything in GitHub is proprietary. They don't, they don't even provide the source code of their platform. In, okay. in GitLab, That's... you have in GitLab you have the source code. And okay. That's most the, of the, the, so is that new since Microsoft bought them? Because about three no, years no, ago, no, I no, no, it's been I, it's been forever. Really? Because I I maybe it was longer ago than three years ago, but I know and get it's been a while. I I know a student and I in twenty twelve downloaded the source code for GitHub because she wanted to make a community gardening well, ticket. I've site never seen I've never it. seen uh, the um, GitHub. I never seen the GitHub source code, so I know they have. Yeah, I mean, this is going back to 2012, so uh, well, that, that's they have, probably they changed. Have a, they have a repository, they have things, but I, if I remember, they don't have the, so the, the core of the platform is not there. So they have other things, but not the core of the platform. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, as far as my understanding, it has, has never been open source. So now the question, the discussion here. Well, not, not, open, not open source, not even they provide a source code. So it's not. Uh, I know I've seen it. So I'm just, I mean, maybe it's just been taken away. <laughs> um, well, probably, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I yes. mean, that's when you hear the phrase, Sean, if you've ever heard the phrase open core, that's kind uh -huh. of what GitLab ends up falling into that okay the core is open source yeah but a lot so of you, there, there may be some proprietary parts around it yeah, yeah and that's how that's how github used to s distinguish i know i mean i i maybe i'm insane but i i know there was like a git i know there was a github source code that i could fork because mm -hmm. i i forked it to create a in 2012 to create this gardening site with a student okay well and, then, and i know the german government did something with it at one point as well, but this could be, this is a long time ago. Yeah, Eight so years is a 20, long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a long time. I'm not like denying that. Um, I mean, there's something to, you know, there's a, there's certainly a, I don't think the, the, I don't think the argument of it's not open source is um, a reason to raise switching costs, but if GitLab has actually got an open core that it chaos is. could contribute to upstream. Now I think you're making an argument that the community needs to take seriously because the, now we have a platform that we can weave chaos metrics into directly. Um, <laughs> right? Like we can contribute to the Git. We That's can super fair actually. <laughs> we can contribute to the, if this is the case and I need to do a little more research because I'm operating on very old information. Um, then, then there's a significant, there's a real case that can be made that we can alter these platforms, um, and shape them and how people interpret them with chaos metrics. And that's a very strong argument. If GitHub won't let us do that. Um, well, GitHub will not. That's yeah, the best. Know. That's the, what I was going to, yeah, GitHub will not. And I don't know what the level of influence is on that open core part, which for GitLab. Yeah, for GitLab. GitHub will not allow it, but yeah. may. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's upstream contributions are generally regarded by open source people as a good thing. The, well, mean, yeah, right. I don't there, know what, I don't there know. There are categories of projects for which they're not, like the, the, the best case I've ever researched is the um, Twitter bootstrap project, which denied hundreds of pull requests from people who are not on a seven person core. Um, so there's ways that project culture can alter that practice, but I'm, I don't know. Of all the things you've said, that's the best case I've heard for the switching, for incurring these switching costs. Um, I guess I have a few comments to make and it's less about the technology. Um, so one, how, um, for those of, those of you that have done it, how easy is it to remove a repository from GitHub to GitLab? Like, is the switching cost actually high? For the repo itself, it's low. Okay. For so the practices like surrounding the contributions to the repo, mm -hmm. it's it's high because you're managing a completely different issue tracking infrastructure and a completely different pull request or whatever they call it, infrastructure. Um, 
how the commits are traced is an available or not available through APIs uh, is different. Um, so there's, there's, there's switching costs for the community of just getting used to a new interface. It's like, um, you know, you can compare it to a corporate ERP implementation. You're, it's fundamentally still accounting, but you're going to be changing how everyone does all the accounting things, except for the bank transfers, okay. which is what the GitHub, GitLab infrastructure basically does. That's the common part. They all transfer code using Git the same way. Everything else is a different user experience. But it's not, and there's a little, there's a few things have I found you, confusing. Have you, about, have you done yeah, it? Yeah, like, so when I, I would create all my um, online, I created a master's degree in on, on data science that was all online. And we did, I did all the course development and my TAs did all the course development using GitHub repositories. And then when we distributed it to students, we put it inside of GitLab, in an enterprise GitLab, for the specific reason that we could take our GitHub repository very easily and create 40 clones, one for each student that was an exact copy and then easily migrate downstream any changes that we made without affecting their changes. So it was a, for an open source online uh, data science course system, GitLab was freaking brilliant for student distribution, way better than any features that uh, GitHub had at the time or now. Um, however, I mean, it's a completely different use case than what we're discussing here. So I haven't tried it. I haven't tried making an open source project on GitLab or moving an open source project to GitLab. Monty, have you done it? With no, we have. We haven't done that yet. I I, okay. I know there are tools, but I I never use any of them because all the projects that so we we are using GitHub internally in Viterja. Yep. To, to do other, other stuff like yep. uh, DevOps and these kind of things. Yep. And and all the projects that we created there were new. Okay. So there's not we didn't import anything. Okay. And they're all just they're all still in GitHub. Yeah. Okay. No, they're in GitLab. Not no, GitLab. GitLab okay. internally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The church lab works almost exclusively in GitLab now. I see. Okay. Demo lab is the only thing that we still have in GitHub. I, I gotcha. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know when the statement about that it's an entirely different issue system, I doubt it's entirely new. I mean, philosophically, it's kind of the same, right? Um, pull requests, I know they have different names, but I would imagine they function moderately the same somebody can correct me if i'm wrong but. some of the i mean some of the analysis that i did by reading and not doing is that it is actually easier to GitLab does a better job with continuous in integration so mm -hmm. whereas like we're writing constant um travis ci yeah, integrations and, and things and, and it's I mean, we figured out how to do it, but it was a learning curve. And as I understand it, uh, GitLab provides some of those features. I'm not sure if it's in the free version or the enterprise version, but GitLab does provide some continuous integration features that would reduce, um, well, <laughs> Carter might shoot me because he's the one who made all that continuous integration work, but it should reduce, I mean, there is a maintenance cost to having to manage it as a plugin. Mm -hmm. so, in theory, and I certainly want to test this, the continuous integration part, which I think is essential, is is more, I wanted to say more better easy, but let's just say easier on GitLab, uh, GitLab according to the Medium articles I was reading last night while okay. trying to understand. So the, good thing, the good thing about the continuous integration in, in GitLab is they have a stages. So mm -hmm. like you can, have several steps to to do one job and Travis doesn't have that or what they have it but in different ways so uh, in, in GitLab you can build a pipeline a continuous delivery pipeline so it can have different it can has uh, different stages so that's great that's 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 why so people my, like it so my um my other comment was from a chaos project perspective, 
-hmm. and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I kind of believe the entire project should be in one spot or another. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I, I, I asked the question, but I have an opinion about it, but I wanted, I didn't know the temperature of the community on that. I, my instinct is that it would fracture our attention if we didn't do it that way um, and potentially undermine the entire project. So right. I would like um, to see it all in one place. That's kind of my take. Well, do other people have thoughts on that? This is more of a, a management issue. Yeah. No, no, it's what it is. No. <laughs> yeah, so, but having so in my, a couple. In my opinion, it, we should be all, we should have everything in the same place. And I would be very happy if, if GitHub had the, 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 the groups, subgroups thing, but. Yeah, right. It sounds like subgroups would solve a lot of this issue. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Or sub organizations. Yeah, so, it would. It, yeah, it seems like the biggest issue it would solve is the. What is the, the biggest uh, issue it would solve? It's the issue aggregation. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But the, yeah. Like you can't see all the issues. If, although you could solve that if Grimoire Lab just had a single repo that tracked issues, that could solve it. <laughs> We've already talked about that. It doesn't totally solve it. No, no, it doesn't. No, but I mean, I think, but I guess my point is that, as I was understanding it, the things that doesn't solve are still not so solved. We, we, will, we will figure out. We if, if we don't finally move, we will find a workaround or something like that. So, it's, it's um, so that was yeah. yeah so the and I more, think if we yep. So the, the the main point is is basically uh, it's philosophical as, as we were saying. So we, we started uh, when we started in uh, with Grimoire Lab, we started in GitHub because GitLab was still very new. So they didn't yeah. have many features. It was most of the time it was failing and it wasn't available. But now I think it's, we have been using it for two years and it's very stable. Yep. So uh, the, the thing is when we, when we started in, in chaos, we were at the point that we were considering to move Grimoire Lab to GitLab, but a couple years ago, yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, as as we opened the the project in GitHub, we decided to to still there. So yeah, so we we, did, we didn't know what what the reasons were about open the project in in GitHub. So, but Georg told me the other day that it was just. Because you didn't find any better place, so it was there wasn't discussion. We didn't look too far. We just had to move out of yeah. the wiki, and we, the first place that came to mind was GitHub, and so that's yeah. where we went. No, no, that, that makes yeah. sense. But but we thought wrongly that it was a uh, something related to Linux Foundation, and that they wanted to do have everything there or something yeah, like no. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not at the time. There was no discussion of that. Yeah. Well, I understand. Um, and then the other thing is if, I mean, if, if this does happen, right, um, I think we would need to think about a, kind of like a transition plan. Yeah. yeah. So there there may be a period of time where, you know, Grimoire Lab is the first to, like, I don't think it would just occur on a Saturday. <laughs> like yeah, everything just know. moves. Well, I think, I mean, I guess if I had one thought, how, I don't know what the urgency is from Grimoire Lab folks. Clearly, you're the folks experiencing pain um, with issue management. And I, I, I don't know if we're talking about like arterial bleeding or a sore toe. No, um, no, it's, it's not. We, so I, was, uh, I take the blame for raising this question. <laughs> So, so if it's a sore, if it's closer to a sore toe than arterial bleeding, and I realize those are extreme examples. Um, one of the one of the sort of timing challenges that that we face is um, pretty close to the end of the school year. I'm gonna have a sort of a different, oh, some of the same people, but some new people coming on this summer, and if and I'll have some number of Google Summer of Code students, presumably. Um, I don't want to be in the middle of a transition or have my core team not understand how to produce builds <laughs> uh, over the summer when the configuration of the people doing the work is very different. Um, mm -hmm. So that would lead me towards like 
sort of a yippee ki let's do it today, or could we please wait until after the summer if we decide to do this? Gary, you had a comment? <clears throat> well, I was just going to say that uh, the, the issue tracking issue that uh, it was me who raised it. And my understanding is the maintainers are OK continuing to work. Um, as it is, so I don't think we need to do it now. It's just an improvement that we can make. This has been a super interesting discussion just here in 45 minutes for me to kind of get to understand. No, for me too, because I've, yeah. been, I've been operating from a, I'm a human being and I don't like change and I don't want to have to change or do work because that sounds way harder than not changing. But <laughs> And so I really wanted to understand like the what's going on and I think yeah I think from this the philosophical issues are starting to resonate more with me yeah open core and then also the point of possibly being able to affect change in GitLab those are two pretty interesting arguments to if make. if uh yeah if GitHub and I'm sending emails to my GitHub contacts if they don't allow upstream contributions then I think there's a significant strategic advantage for chaos to embrace GitLab if GitLab really allows us to make strategic upstream contributions to their core uh, infrastructure. Yeah. Because, because now we have the opportunity to say, hey, we've identified these interesting categories of insights about different projects and we are gonna make that part of your platform and that is gonna be a value add for your customers and you're into that, so that sounds awesome. Ashley just shared a, um, an issue on a <laughs> dear GitHub, I didn't even know this existed, <laughs> a dear GitHub repository. Which <laughs> it looks like it's a, <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like, right? It's like Dear Abby for nerds. <laughs> I think it's Dear GitHub, can you please? So thanks for sharing that. Um, it's funny. I, I'm happy to, I am super happy to keep this conversation going. And I, you know, I mean, I think maybe my leanings right now are to look at GitLab as a possible solution moving forward, but not to Sean's point, not today. No, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just in a and like, and I, I, you know, it's like I'm like anyone. Okay, I'm, this sounds some, something we should talk about at least. But then the first thing I thought of is what are the things this could immediately destroy, and that would yeah. Be so like this would be my summer. Of, <laughs> this would be the transition plan that we might want to think about how to. I don't know, the timing of it, the repositories to go first, the way that that's reported back to the community. So if Grimoire Lab would be the first one, I'm just thinking out loud here. But, you know, concerns or issues that were raised as Grimoire Lab switches over, you know, like we thought this would work, but it didn't, or this was way easier than we thought, you kind of those um, reports out. Um, I don't know, just thinking out loud here. Uh, quick, quick comment here. Um, yeah. I think it's an interesting conversation. So one of the, one of the things you have, so, or, or a potential question you have raised is how we can influence uh, in somehow GitLab or, or GitHub. Uh, I think it would be really, really useful for Chaos to help them to become more research friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. Example here, if you want to uh, have a specific information about the number of downloads or clones in GitHub, you need to create kind of an app for GitHub. And this is not available directly through the API. What if as Chaos, we go there and say, hey, this would be really, really useful for uh, chaos metrics because this, this, and that reason. And having this information in the API available would be yep. really great for this reason and that other reason. So yep. either this is GitHub or GitLab or both or any other tooling. It's something we can we can try to do. Um, I don't know if either attending uh, GitLab or GitHub conferences and trying to have a specific, uh, I don't know, research friendly good practices or similar mm -hmm. stuff that affect any of the software part of, of, of chaos. So something to discuss about. So you were the ones bringing the discussion. It's an interesting thought. I like that idea. 
And I don't think we've ever really talked about that before. No, so no, I mean, that, that, and that's in the answer to the, what does this open source part mean? And you answered that in a way that I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like potentially like a huge leverage point for making chaos part of everyone's open source world and making Microsoft open their stuff up because they're losing for not having us. We're back into I like to dream big. I like to dream big. It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm an, I'm an idea man, Chuck. It's uh... <laughs> I'm going to step off for just a bit because I've got another meeting in 10 minutes. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm minutes for the next meeting. Yeah, I can wait five more minutes because my bathroom is closer. <laughs> so in terms of the agenda, I think we have, uh, well, we have covered the first of the points. I guess that the... Uh, in 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the final uh, output is that we still are where we are, but we need to discuss and advance more in the discussion, right? Yeah, I, th yeah, I think the conversation actually advanced because there's this opportunity from the open source piece, and um, that's actually, I mean, a, like the, the issue tracking, I don't understand, and I'll take the time to actually create a project that has some contributors and understand what that what it means, because um, I haven't I haven't had the issue that you are all clearly experiencing, uh, and that's likely because I'm suspecting. Are you getting help desk tickets over, um, like help desk like tickets from users who don't understand stuff? Uh, like we use GitHub issues principally for developers, but do you have actual end users who are using like Kubernetes has a like a tech, like a problem ticket template um, on their repo. Do you use the issue trackers for problem tickets as well as for feature and bug requests? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's not a, there's no judgment. Kubernetes does it, so it must be cool. Um, hmm. But then that that's gonna, yeah, that would, that's certainly, and that's not a bad idea, by the way. Um, but that, that definitely raises the volume of poorly classified issues that you have to deal with. And you do have a much uh, larger installed user base than anything I'm working with right now. So I'm glad you're, I'm glad this issue got raised. I'm actually kind of excited if GitLab lets us make upstream contributions and GitHub doesn't that, I don't know, strategically that seems like a winner, like issue stuff aside. I'll shut up now so you can have any other topics. <laughs> no, no, so I think we can we can close for today because there's only eight minutes for the next. Uh, All right. So uh, absent travel bans uh, or. I'll stop the recording yeah. then. If you yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used I used contagion.